Welcome to the Nutramedical Report, hour number two. On Friday, the 9th of January, 2009, it's hard to believe how fast this first week and a bit has already gone by. And uh, we're going to have on a series of the top experts in the world, breakthroughs in medical, and nutraceutical, and genetics. And one of those top teachers in the Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine is Dr. Nicholas Martin, MD. And Syndrome X is probably one of the top two or three public health disasters in the Western world, and as nations like China and Russia and other nations that have their own diets start to switch to our westernized diet, they have a massive explosion of diabetes, obesity, blindness, kidney failure, etc., all caused by the dietary, and also there's other epigenetic influences from toxins, etc. I want to welcome back to the show to discuss this a very big problem and the fact that it's not being properly addressed by either the medical community, the public health, or uh, in many ways, I call it the Hal Roker syndrome. Hal, of course, putting his weight back on after having a stomach surgery a, so, a year or so ago. It's a big problem. There's a lot of failures of people with this time of the year doing their New Year's resolution to lose weight when really it's a metabolic uh, problem that has genetic factors, dietary factors, and others. So welcome back to the show, Dr. Nick Martin. Well, thank you, sir. Tell us how big the problem is and how serious it is in terms of the danger for degenerative diseases in our society, and literally all the nations that are becoming westernized. Well, it's, it's worse in certain nations, and if you look at the numbers, um, I mean, the United States is number one in the world in disease, and of course Kentucky's been number one, where I practice until recently. They say Mississippi took us over at least in in um in all in all components of diabetes, which is interesting, I think we're still number one in cancer but um in any case, the United States is number one, and the next country that's number two is Australia, and New Zealand is not as high as Australia, but they're close and so the point is is that that those two countries have two or three things in common, and one of them is we have similar genetics uh, and number two is is that we both we're the only two developed countries, um, except, uh, I mean, unless you consider China developed, because they're starting to use corn syrup, too, real heavy. But we're the only two countries, developed countries, that, that have been consistently using corn syrup for, you know, the last 25, 30 years. And we're number one and number two. And so when when you look at when you look at the corn syrup issue, it's, it's really funny because the corn syrup uh, producing Companies are starting to send doctors little little um, reports that they have done, little studies that they have done, showing that corn syrup doesn't uh, doesn't cause the obesity problem and it doesn't cause the diabetes problem. And what they do is they get two skinny people, uh, or a bunch of skinny people, and they feed half of them corn and the other half they don't. And and uh, only in one or two studies they showed there was a little difference. But um, but that's not the people you look at because the people they're going to get in trouble are the people who have like a Scottish Irish descent um, and had survived famines and those were the people who had more of a you know obesity on them to start with and uh, that's why they survived the famines and those are the people that that are have the genetics to to be more susceptible to the effects of corn syrup and the effects of poisons that come out of that system and yeah, let, let's go over some of the specifics of that because read this this story is like a, a suspense thriller and the way you teach it at the academy and the way you've taught it in these in these articles that we posted up on uh, polymorphisms, which are single letter DNA changes, it means yeah, that there's a conversion it problem. It's complicated because when you put people through a lot of stress, we call them epigenetic epi, epigenetic effects, which is uh, you know well known, and there's lots of different ones. But I mean, some of them are so simple as if your grandfather was uh, on a limited diet uh, for a lengthy period of time, it affects his. Gr- Grandchildren, uh, if his, if if he had too much to eat, that affects his grandchildren. You know, if he if he over uh, engorged himself, well, if he over engorged himself, he usually means that he's short of something, you know, some nutrient. And of course, if you're short of minerals, example, we tend to crave sugar because the good Lord made those nice sweet fruit out there with lots of minerals in them because of the deep fruits, you know, deep roots of the fruit tree. And and so it's almost natural for you to crave sweets if you're short in minerals. But anyway, the point I'm making is if if you see most people who get overweight, they've either got a genetic problem with polymorphism, which means their enzymes aren't working, or 
they've got a they've got a deficiency in the environment that they're in that creates in them a deficiency for them personally that creates a problem with them reading and to explain what I mean by personally people with different genetics have different demands for vitamins yeah in other words uh, as you taught me the conversion and activation of vitamin D the skinny person will make vitamin D when exposed to sunlight right. the obese person may not and if you don't measure blood you know actual blood levels you don't right. know even if they look like they have a strong tan that they can't convert it and therefore uh, their response is appetite control and metabolism problems that predispose and cause obesity, vascular disease, inflammation, cancer, diabetes, you know, all these things happen. Yeah, and, and D, D, C is, is, is it's really, it's really complicated in some ways because D, I, I see one, I saw this thing on the internet where this fellow was treating sarcoidosis by suppressing uh, the immune system um, by eliminating D, and just like you would suppress it with a drug, only only he was suppressing it by eliminating D, and it was a it was a better approach than drugs. By me, I'm not saying it's 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 the same. It's probably better than that. But in, in a sense, when when you look at an autoimmune disease, it is an autoimmune disease out of a deficiency, and those deficiencies are things that you need to run. You know, your your major part of your immune system that takes care of bacteria and cancer and viruses and fungi and all those things. And if you're not treating those major pathogens that we meet in our environment, if you don't have enough A, you don't have enough D, you don't have enough P5P, um, you don't have enough biotin, then the whole, the other side that's set up to handle parasites and allergies will kick in and start, Attacking every foreign protein, and these people will get gluten sensitive, and then, and then if they're gluten sensitive, their psyllae, which is what helps them to absorb nutrients, shrinks up, and they get sprue, and and then they can't get a, they can't get uh, you know nutrients in their body anymore, and and so there's all it's it's all intertwined in a sense of first you know you you get this going, and then that happens, and then this happens, and before long you're malnourished up to your ears, and so in some of these people that I treat. Uh, it takes, you know, uh, 15,000 times, or 15,000 percent is the percentage we use, 15,000 percent more vitamins in certain polymorphic people, which means their DNA is abnormal, their RNA is abnormal, and their proteins are abnormal. And if their enzymes are abnormal, that demands and they use up a lot more cofactor, which are, in, which are vitamins and minerals. And if you're going to use up a lot more cofactor than the average guy, you're going to run short unless you have an awful lot. Yeah, that's important. And what you've discovered, and you, because you've done such a good detective work over the years, which is literally, you know, decades of research, you can actually have a very elegant, it's complex though. That's why people need to know you've been working on a new, uh, a new, uh, substance, you know, formula to reverse Syndrome X. But you need to have some, you need to be trained, you need to have some degree of, of healthcare and wellness supervision because uh, this is going to alter your ability to head, control blood sugar. It's going to do lots of things in your body because it actually takes away the metabolic blocks to normalize blood sugar control, blood insulin levels, and metabolism. But, you you know, you can trash your blood sugar. It can drop in some individuals if you go too quickly. Exactly. And that's that's the only problem. I mean, I've, I've, had, um, I've had two – I've had three side effects so far in all my patients I've treated – uh, or four count. One lady said, "I got sick on it uh, and made me sick, and I couldn't take it." And I said, "Okay, that's good." I mean, so everybody can't take everything, but what I've developed is a is a multi. Uh, it really, it's a multivitamin. It's all activated, and it's basically those things that you need to make the polymorphism more normal in its production of the products that the enzyme produces. And the enzyme's like an assembly line. And your vitamins and minerals are like workers on the assembly line. And you start out with a raw material like metal, and you end up with a car or a car part yeah. on the assembly line. And that's the way our body does the same thing. We make CoQ10, we make vitamin A, we make D. I mean, we don't get D from the sun. We get a chemical from the sun that we have to put through our enzyme system in the kidney and the liver before yeah, exactly. it becomes D. Exactly. Amazing. Well, we'll continue this right after the break with Dr. Nick Martin, and your question is 800 